All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel for the SUV news segment of the channel here. So uh, we've got some great news here coming out of Dodge, of course, with the 2023 Dodge Hornet. This is the SUV uh, that they're going to be coming out with here for 2023, and this is going to be actually pretty impressive. Um, they're telling us here in this article that I'm reading from Dodge um, that it's going to have a 265 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder with an all-wheel drive and a nine-speed automatic is the standard setup. But the RT model is a plug-in hybrid with 285 horsepower and more than 30 miles of electric driving. Not only will the Hornet offer Dodge's first hybrid powertrain, so that's pretty cool. So the Hornet is going to offer Dodge's first hybrid powertrain. It'll also boost the most high-tech equipment in the brand's lineup. With standard features that include a digital gauge display, you connect five inf infotainment software and automatic uh, emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. And it seems like a lot of vehicles are coming over with that as well for 2023. Um, the non-hybrid GT models are expected to go on sale by the end of 2022, so they're talking roughly around December, with the RT PHEV models following shortly after in early 2023. So here's what they're saying. What is new for 2023 for this one? Um, it's going to start with the SXT model at $30,000 roughly. That's the estimated price. You're going to have a GT model of this new, new Dodge Hornet at $33,000. Uh, the RT is going to start at about $36,000. The Citadel will start at about $39,000 estimation. Uh, Dodge is offering the Hornet as either the GT or the RT PHV, uh, PHEV sorry, for the 2023 model year, although other trims could be added later on. Dodge says the entry-level GT model will start around $30,000, of course. When we find out more about the Hornet's pricing uh, and options, it will probably be listed here as well when, the, when they update what's going on further. Uh, let's get into the engine and, you know, the performance of the vehicle here is what they're saying. So the Hornet GT models are powered by, again, the turbocharged 2.0-liter four-cylinder that makes 265 horsepower and comes paired with a nine-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive is optional, so if you want the all-wheel drive model, it's an option that you can order. And Dodge says the powertrain is good enough to motivate the Hornet to a 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.5 seconds, which is really, it's pretty fast for a little vehicle like that. Uh, the RT model is Dodge's first plug-in hybrid, is what they're saying, and it's powered by a turbocharged 1.3-liter four-cylinder and an electric motor that together combines for up to 285 horsepower combined. Instead of the 9-speed automatic from the GT, the RT gets a 6-speed automatic but still comes standard with all-wheel drive. Interesting. So the RT will have a 6-speed but it will come standard with all-wheel drive. So that's also where you're going to get that little extra uh, more grip as well. The powertrain can temporarily boost output by 25 horsepower via a feature called Power Shot that's activated by pulling both paddle shifters. So this vehicle is going to have paddle shifters for you folks on the steering wheel that like the paddle shifters. With the Power Shot mode engaged, Dodge says the RT and the PHEV can hit 60 miles per hour in 6.1 seconds. Uh, interesting. So, yeah, it's called the power shot mode. <clears throat> interesting, for sure. Range, charging, and battery life for you folks that are going to be opting in for the hybrid. The plug-in hybrid RT model comes with a 12 kilowatt hour battery pack that Dodge says is good for over 30 miles of electric driving per charge so if you just want to drive the electric part of it without using the gas of course it'll be good for up to 30 miles 
charging time on a level two charger is around two and a half hours. So if you want to charge up and just drive the like you know off the battery pack, battery power, sorry, it's gonna be about two and a half hours to charge it every time. Fuel economy and real world miles per gallon. So they're saying here it's gonna have roughly around 75 miles per, per highway uh, fuel economy test route uh, is what they're saying so they tested it with uh, 75 miles per, per per highway in the interior comfort and cargo so um, judging from this the first uh, test drive of the Hornets Italian cousin the Alfa Romeo so they're building this off of the by the sounds of thing the Alfa Romeo uh, so interesting for sure. So it seems like a lot of the, the brands are turning to the Alfa Romeo for that little bit of more sporty side to make their, their SUV segments a little more sporty and more, more, more faster, more aerodynamic and more sleek. So, which is interesting for sure. So it sounds like they're, they're teaming up with those folks. All models come with a 10.3 inch infotainment touchscreen and a 12.3 inch digital gauge display. The software interface is the latest Uconnect 5 system, which is in use in all of the other brands, but like Chrysler Pacifica minivan and the Ram 1500 pickup truck. It's going to have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, our standard features. And and Amazon Alexa connectivity, upgrading to either the GT Plus or the RT Plus swaps in a 14 speakered Harman Kardon stereo for the standard system and adds a wireless smartphone charging pad, of course. So let's go over some of the safety features here. So what they're saying here, uh, the driver assist features are standard on the Hornet, including the automatic emergency braking with pedestrian cyclist detection. All models also come with blind spot monitoring and parking sensors. The optional tech package adds adaptive cruise control with lane centering, among other features, of course. Uh, so that's pretty cool for the safety features of the vehicle. Standard automatic emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection is what I just said there earlier. But they're also going to have standard lane departure warning with lane keeping assist and available. So you want to uh, add this as an optional adaptive cruise control with a lane centering <clears throat> feature. So that's pretty cool there. You're going to have a limited warranty, which will be three years or six thirty six thousand miles. It's going to have a powertrain warranty, which covers five years or sixty thousand miles uh, for that vehicle as well. So, really, by the looks of the of this vehicle here, it's really it's going to be very very nice. I personally think uh, Dodge is also saying here um, it's going to be the cheapest Hornet will cost around thirty one thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, but again, you're going to have you know quite a little package here uh, for sure when it comes to the to this Dodge Hornet SUV version. Um, you're going to have, you also have the, again, let's go over the plug and play features of what this, what they're saying here for an extra $10,000 Hornet buyers can set up the RT model with a plug in hybrid powertrain promising at least 285 horsepower. Like I was saying earlier with 383 foot pounds of torque. The RP, which goes on sale in the spring, though, folks, it won't be until 2023. Uh, it's also going to drive its front wheels through a six-speed automatic transmission, like I said earlier, using a turbocharged i3 liter, sorry, 1.3 liter i4 engine with a 44 horsepower starter generator. A 121 horsepower electric motor turns the rear wheels. And the 15.5 kilowatt hour battery pack allows for more than 30 miles of pure electric driving. Um, interesting. So they're saying a little more than um, 30 miles, of course. With the tap of the steering wheel pedals, remember I was talking earlier about the paddle shifts, 
power shot unleashes an additional 25 horsepower for 15 seconds at a time. Interesting. So you're going to get a power shot unleashes an additional 25 horsepower for 15 seconds at a time. Uh, trimming the RTs 0 to 60 time by a full second down to a claimed 5.1 second sprint. So yeah, Dodge is also crowing that the RT is capable of a 0.90 G of lateral grip and is driving home the plug-in's performance positioning with 18-inch wheels. It's going to have the Brimo four-piston front caliper, sorry, front brake calipers and dual exhaust, a track pack available on both the GT and the RT adds a 20-inch wheels two mode electronically adjustable dampers and the Alcantara seats of course so actually this thing is going to be it's going to be really really nice actually um i can't wait to actually see this one for sure especially with the it's going to have the you know the the sport dual exhaust it's going to have 20 inch wheels it's going to have unique rear uh, valence and a glh graphics I really do like the graphics from the pictures I'm looking at here. This vehicle is actually going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a winner, uh, personally, for those people that are looking for, you know, the the crossover from Dodge um, as, you know, part of the crossover segment. And uh, it's going to have a little bit of power, right, for those folks that really like to, to have a little bit of sportiness. Uh, you know, and it's going to be priced right personally, I think, you know, for what you're getting. So, yeah, it should be interesting. I can't wait to actually see this one for sure. So, don't forget to like and to subscribe. That's it for this video. And be safe no matter where you are in the world. Uh, it's, if it's the morning, the afternoon, or evening. And uh, bye for now.